So let's see how they slip the code in on this on this information, updated information about Saturn, which is one minute, one minute and thirty-three seconds long. So Saturn's North Pole is changing colors. You know the one with the hexagon on it, which is the cube. So it's in the shape of a hexagon, which is a cube. It has two Earths in it. So that could be equated to duality. But we'll, we'll, we'll just leave it as two Earths for right now. It has a hurricane at the center. Remember the Rolling Stones hurricane crossfire? Remember? Here, let me find it. Rolling, St Rolling Stones, the demonic entity. Here it is, here, the Rolling Stones. Remember I told you a stone is a demonic entity? Stones, trees, and stars. Crossfire. A crossfire is an X. There's the dot in the middle. See them in there? Nice color, right? Golden. Okay, so let's go back to what we were looking at. Blowing at 3330 miles an hour. So we have a hexagon. We have 33. Well, it's not done yet. Went from blue to gold. Went from blue to gold. which is covering the hexagon and turning it into a golden hue which is equivalent of the return to the golden the golden age of Saturn so you have your 33 your hexagon your golden hue what else do you need it's just another coded story oh and this this Cassini is uh, just another word for for uh, Cassia or Cassiel, the angel that in, that that uh, is like the main angel that inhabits Saturn's atmosphere. Look at this dickweed. Don't you want to get more for your money? No. Well, nothing's easier than saving money with a sure on. The how funny. I did this just exactly the opposite way. I did all the LSD first and then learned about Saturn. Just do, it's do it the other way around. I took a lot of LSD as a, as a young man. A lot. It was a new thing. It was a scary thing at the time. You know, television and magazines were filled with lurid warnings of what might happen from the very beginning. Yeah, you know, like a big red X. Like right there. This is the first commercial I've ever seen in my life advocating the use of LSD. But that's what it is. Happened from the very beginning. It was a very, very, very positive experience for me. You know, I don't know that you know my third eye opened or I became part of some cosmic unifying theory. Nothing like that. It gave me an ability to understand that there are other angles to look at things. Opened me up to the possibility of. All you notice they showed you the cube, right there understand that there are other angles to look at things. Sure, there's other angles. Open me up to the possibility 
of alternate perspectives. It was helpful to me creatively and in some ways inspiring to me. It is a full on mind and body, a sensory, uh, visual. Well, this guy's behind the times. Everybody's doing DMT now, but carry on. Audio visual experience. I didn't come out of it thinking, wow, well, I really changed my philosophy. I just think it made me more open minded, a willingness and even an eagerness to step into other people's shoes, to look at the world from perspectives. Fuck that. All I ever did is laugh on the shit. <laughs> other than the ones that I was raised with. That said, I really never felt the urge to, to do it again. I feel I kind of learned what I had to learn. And beyond that, it becomes more of a a masturbatory uh, experience rather than enlightening. Yeah, I don't remember too much of the masturbatory a bit. I do remember laughing, though. But um, if you like to do LSD and jerk off, I guess that's what you, your gig is. Go, go ahead, knock yourself out. I think that it's a drug with a lot of positive things to be explored and a lot to be said for it. I would recommend that if you are mentally healthy, it is generally agreed upon that you are of sound mind and body. With, I think a good self-image, a sense of, of self-worth. You uh, don't have a, a family history of schizophrenia or manic depression. I would be open to be careful, probably supervised use or experimentation with LSD. I always found it useful to be around somebody with previous experience when doing it uh, in an environment that you feel safe and controllable in some place even safer to go to hide if you start to like feel uncomfortable or paranoid or experience a negative reaction and i always kept a big fistful of uh antipsychotic drugs around just in case so <laughs> uh, you know what brings you down off of lsd chocolate milk i found that because i did i did plenty of trips trust me but I would never suggest that, you know, be, you know, you find if you find mind to mind body, LSD basically cuts the barrier of your consciousness and combines your, your conscious mind with your subconscious mind. So if you got shit that's fucked up in your subconscious mind, it's going to come out. And LSD, what it does is it, it fine tunes any thought that you're thinking. I mean, it, 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 there was plenty of times where... We would do acid and sit around laughing at a doorknob. Now, that seems ridiculous, but it puts your mind in a different state where there, there's comedy in it. Every, everything is funny. And then there's a point where you go, you go up and it's called you peak. That's where you hit the point where it's hitting its strongest, and that lasts for about two hours, sometimes a little longer. And then you start to come down. And when you start to come down, you start to get depressed a little bit because you can feel that you're going back into this reality. But I, mean, I had a good time with it. It was cheap. It was not addictive. But I would never advocate on film that you should go out and do it because he's right about the possibility. If you know those horror stories you hear about people jumping out windows, those people had something wrong with their head to begin with. You don't do it if you're not if shit ain't working right upstairs. It's a very bad thing. Otherwise, it's it's great. <laughs> but this is the first time I ever saw anybody advocate. Uh, putting Saturn with LSD, of course, but I knew this a long time ago.